Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning into our talk, It Takes a Village, Students Performing ICS Security Assessments. My name is Dennis Scar. I'm tenured faculty here at Everett Community College and as also a member of the National Guard where we were performing a handful of missions in different critical infrastructure and our unit even stood up training and trained other cyber operators on how to perform assessments in an ICS space. I took that experience and the lessons learned and rolled it into the fabric of a five credit class here at Everett Community College and we're presenting on the first class to actually go through this experience and performing their very own mock ICS security assessment. Special thanks to all the volunteers at ICS Village. I know it takes a lot of work and effort to get things off the ground for these events and we appreciate the opportunity to share our story. Every year I would return to the DEF CON and spend a lot of time at the ICS Village. I really appreciated having access to the technology, the talks, culture and even the community involved with everything and when we had an opportunity to pursue a grant and you know possibly you know build up an ICS program I immediately thought of those experiences that I had at DEF CON leading up to uh, our pursuit of this program So when the grant opportunity kind of came to our team, we were exploring a lot of different technologies in which we could possibly invest in. And, you know, the typical stuff comes up, like should we go cloud, server, more networking stuff? And, you know, obviously cybersecurity is big and a lot of student interest is there in that space. But it took a nudge from my team to say, hey, you do a lot of cool missions. You're doing all this ICS stuff. Like, why don't we go there? So, you know, we did. And I reached out to Tom Van Norman, who is the co-founder of ICS Village. And you know, I said, Tom, like, what you guys have is extraordinary. What would it take to actually get that here on our campus? And we came with a plan, put in an offering, and you know, we, we were, I was thrilled. I was actually blown away that we actually had this opportunity. And I'm very thankful for the state of Washington to actually provide that to our students. When we created the Assessing and Securing Control Systems class, we wanted to make sure that we could have students from information technology, operational technology, and business programs all funnel up into this class so we can have this uh, cross cut of culture all within uh, the same class. Uh, in, in my experience with these assessments, it really took those three areas to come together to understand, you know, not only how the business is, how businesses function, but how does the business processes map down to the information technology, that technology supports those processes, and then IT, how does that actually relate to all your different uh, operational technology down together. And once you have those dependencies mapped and you understand how the whole system truly works, that's when you can start looking at how to uh, effectively apply security controls and find those crown jewels within an organization that require uh, deeper layers of protection. All throughout the quarter, students were working as a team to actually prepare briefings to a, a mock uh, manufacturing uh, group. You know, where they had to present different threats uh, that happened in real time. So when Oldsmar happened and the Colonial Pipeline, we rolled that into the fabric of the class. They had to actually kind of take what information was available to them and then present to a group in terms that they actually understand. So we built on those skill sets over the quarter. And during the last week, they were presented uh, a, a company that actually, you know, enjoyed their presentations and hired them to assess their company. And the company I created was uh, Fantastic Plastics. It's a plastic mold injection company. And they provide a product to a aerospace manufacturer in the area. And they also have DOD contracts. So students had seven primary tasks that they had to deliver on. And in addition to you know, working with the, the customer, which was me through email, they had to perform a physical assessment of this environment and then perform uh, or give a presentation uh, to 
the owner. And the owner in this exercise was Tom Van Norman from ICS Village. And they, they knew that they had to present to someone knowledgeable. They didn't know that they had to present to the creator of the wall. Sharing their experience of this assessment are two students, uh, Chris and Alex, who took a, a big interest in ICS over the quarter and have, have a lot to offer to the community. I'm proud of all of our students who are choosing to get their education uh, on top of a pandemic right now, but I really wanna take a moment to have two of uh, my students share their story. Hello, my name is Chris Von Rabiton, and this is Alex Vygovsky, and I am a former student, graduated uh, Ever Community College in winter of 2020, and uh, I'm currently in North Pole, Alaska, so pardon the uh, bad connection. <laughs> I'm uh, Justin Washington over here. I'm Alex. Uh, I'm a recent graduate at Everett Community College. I closed out my time taking Dennis Scar's ICS security class with Chris. And I came back to Everett Community College just for that class. <laughs> yep. The big uh, capstone project that we did for that class was a mock security assessment that was enabled by an ICS security wall that we were able to acquire thanks to Tom Van Norman and Grimm. And what it is, is it's a piece of hardware that it's an all-in-one kind of ICS uh, solution, including the HMI, the PLC, and uh, the actual in-out process towards the end, which I guess was a plastic making device. <laughs> yeah, well, our, our teacher, Dennis Carr, he um, works with uh, Air Force National Guard, and he created this capstone off of his actual experiences in the field. And so he created this company, like the Fantastic Plastics, that has a uh, DOD priority plastic mix. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we were sent in to assess and secure the, the company. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the scope of our the scope of our assessment was having to do with the operational technology part of the network. We did not um, deal with the business side, though. In the scenario, there was elements of the business network as well that I think were critical. As you know, it, it's important to kind of tie those two networks uh, together because you know the air gap is not a reality in 2021. That's my kind of favorite quote now. Um, but what we did is we we mapped out all the relevant network devices, you know, every every single critical device and uh, service and data on the on the network, and we were able to scan for vulnerabilities that were had the potential to impact those uh, elements that are most critical to the system, right? Yeah, we. Um had actual physical access to this wall on the campus. And so come in, hook the laptop into the switch and have access to the network. And uh, took us, it took me a little bit till I figured out I had to change the IP address to be on the actual network. But from there, we were using uh, NetDiscover and Wireshark to do passive scans to like try to see what was out there on the network and uh since ot really doesn't like in map we actually got uh signed off to actually be allowed to use in map to start pinging actively pinging and actively scanning uh for vulnerabilities and what was on the network and then we used grass marlin to just get a really good map of everything and uh after we had our map we were allowed to take the next step in the assessment and get a foothold into the network and start 
playing around with what was on the network. Yeah. Not so much trying to break anything, but just see what was on there. Right. It was, it was really great fun uh, seeing you uh, run the Python script that, that then made the water tank start to go haywire. <laughs> that was yeah. Pretty, that was pretty good. Good time. Yeah. What? Well, using the the Pi Modbus discovery script, and so being able to see the registers mm -hmm. for the PLCs and everything, and like watching them change. I'm like, oh, that's what controls this thing. Let me change, use a different script and change that register. Like, put the the water output the maximum, and watching. And then it's being like, what the heck was that? <laughs> Just, ha -ha. And, uh, and then other PLC is like, oh, I'm going to change the register numbers on this and having the entire wall shut down. But lucked out that, I mean, this this thing is well made. It's just a few press, button presses and it's back yeah. up and running. But just like realizing like, okay, this is something you could do to like effectively like shut down a business if this was in real life mm -hmm. and uh then doing uh the edercap dos attack on the hmi and like locking out the ability to change the controls and like this is like this is something we've we're seeing nowadays and like we can actually visually see like and be right there when this kind of stuff happens and like okay now we see how these people are getting in and doing these attacks mm -hmm. yeah so there's a there's a huge kind of ex exploration based um element to this exercise it's something that you don't get with a something like a sim or a vm which is you know a lot of my previous security classes were based around those kinds of exercises this was very much a you get to go in and you and there's like the whole network out there for you to to explore and to to work with and but but do you also do it in a very or controlled and organized manner this is based off of dennis's um time with uh the national guard and the air force he, he's been doing security assessments with them for 10 years i believe he was yeah. he was involved with the 2016 elections he did some cyber security assessments relating to that i believe to voting uh, uh, system hardening all right yep and so he was able to bring a lot of his experience into this exercise and he was able to build a highly kind of modular um ex you know uh, project that it's it's it was all up to kind of the students to um to make with it what they will and one of the kind of big takeaways that I personally got out of it was having to deal with teams and working with um, the time uh, crunch element because you know when you're doing a security assessment uh, professionally you're not doing it by yourself you're working as a part of a team and you have to you have to know how to divide roles up and how to kind of tackle the challenges that you're faced with in a logical manner and that's kind of what uh dennis helped us with but there was no hand holding involved it was a very much kind of sink or swim kind of situation which and he always says this um you learn you really learn the most when you're going through something hard like you that's when the best learning happens right is when you're struggling right because if you're no pain no gain as they say yeah and <laughs> yeah and like when you're 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 actually doing this assessment like we were an actual like red team and like you don't in those kind of experiences you don't have somebody behind you going oh oh you did that right or mm -hmm. like this is how you get to that like we actually had to troubleshoot and figure this stuff out and but also staying within scope of our like objectives objectives and our sod and right. all that stuff right you had you had to get uh, authorization to be able to do certain things i remember when we wanted to um 
try using default credentials to get into some of the network devices. That's something you had to get authorization to do, which again is that's how it would be in in the real world. You, you know, you can, <laughs> a business might not want you accessing a certain you know documents. Um, <laughs> so it it was highly effective as an exercise in that sense. And again, if you if you think about it, this is how um security assessments go in, in the real world every network is going to be different um for me i'm actually working with a an aerospace manufacturer currently myself and so we're constantly dealing with these principles um almost all the data that we work with is highly controlled uh, it's called cui uh controlled unclassified information the department of defense is one of our clients so it's if we don't, if we fail to protect uh, the data and the confidentiality of that data, it's it could mean huge uh, fines for us or loss of face. It, certainly, we can lose customers because of that. Um, with with our assessment, we were primarily working with you know all all that I just mentioned. That was part of it, and then the really exciting stuff was actually disrupting the uh <laughs> the the hardware itself which but that would be on the operational technology side of yeah you know. and like for me this class really like being able to be working with the first ics wall in higher education in the country mm -hmm. or even in the world really like it so solidified like okay cybersecurity is the way i want to go mm -hmm. so i'm like currently enrolled in sans so i can get that bachelor's degree in cybersecurity and like looking at pathways that i can take in cybersecurity now and it's like ics is one of them and it's like i wouldn't even think of doing that without this class mm -hmm. and so being able to just work with this actual thing instead of like, oh, here, let me do the point A to point B, like follow the instructions and the simulation. It's like having this actual physical thing that, you know, see how the little things you do affect everything and being like, okay, I, I can do these things. Now, how do I protect against these things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what you're saying really, um, really hits home for me because uh, yeah, I was very new to IT even when I started the program here. So I had to learn the hardware and the networking principles like from from the ground up. And then it, it was only when I started getting comfortable with that, that I started even getting interested in security. And again, those earlier classes, they were all dealing with just very rigid simulations, very kind of clunky VMs. And I never had a chance to really like stroke that fire to, to, to really become invested and interested. I mean, I wanted to, but the, what really did it was be, this exercise with the wall. Like that's what, that's when it clicked. Like you actually have to do the thing to know, you know, if you enjoy doing the thing or, you know, maybe you don't, but we both do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh I'd, I'd, I'd done uh, ICS Village, uh, hacked the plant, plant planet, uh, CTF, and gotten third in it. And I was like, oh, cool. I, I know my stuff. And then I get uh -huh. a chance to work at the wall. And like, there is so much to learn. Absolutely. And it's, like, it, it's, it's just mind boggling and so cool that we got to have this chance to be like the first ones on the doorstep of this expanding field of like because ics is just so in the news right now and exploding mm -hmm. and like we get a chance to actually work with this stuff so it totally like sets us up for like our future and doing these doing assessments and doing red teaming blue teaming and all that stuff and, and we we need to build the workforce when it comes to um, security experts. And, and here in Washington, especially, I mean, there's we have such a big aerospace industry, which is, you know, 
like what I described with what I do, it's it's extremely important to be able to have these skills and to know how to um, prioritize security from the from the ground up. Um, so it's it's not only is ever community college the first place to kind of uh, do an exercise like this and have um, the wall that type of hardware. We're also in a state that really it's the best place to um, to kind of begin to build that workforce up because we we need we need people who who understand this stuff and who've experienced it you know for real not just not you can get a lot from a book you know but there's no substitute yeah. for experience so. yeah so uh that's looking like our time so I want to thank defcon the ics village I want to thank dennis for being an awesome teacher and tom van norman for getting us the wall to yep. mess with and uh Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you Alex. <laughs> Thank you, Alex and Chris, for sharing your experience. It's been a pleasure having you in class, and I hope to see you in the Control System Security community in the future. Maybe you will be presenting by yourself at DEF CON in a couple of years. So with that, you know, you know, that was what we were able to do with our initial investment. But we were even more fortunate to get uh, another round of funding from Washington State uh, to get even more products, to expand this to, to the, even the next level. And now we have, you know, individual trainers with a PLC where they can perform a handful of exercises, whether they're programming or just network uh, exploitation, traffic analysis, you kind of name it. We're, we're kind of building this stuff as we go. You know, the newest version of Grimm's uh, advanced trainers where they have their own firewall, switch, PLC, and an ESXi server under the hood. You know, we have, you know, these will be part of our competitions as well as workshops and our classes. You know, here at Everett, we teach, you know, uh, servers, networking, help desk, traditional IT stuff. And we're going to be working to actually incorporate these into all of our classes. So, you know, students aren't just getting like an ICS class, like they're getting exposure to it as, as throughout the entire program and they're getting away from the traditional IT stuff. Cisco is great, but how about you do those same kind of concepts on a Fortinet and see how that kind of works out. And, you know, moving right along our 15 foot wall here. Uh, the latest addition is a building automation system here with the latest and greatest Allen Bradley PLC, some, some kind of newer equipment. You know, we got RF, RFID, uh, a, a new HMI, and a very, very sweet uh, wrapped uh, server that's hosting our CTF server in here. So what this element adds to our program is, you know, obviously there's new technology, new network protocols that we get to interact with here. But, you know, this is also built into our college level capture the flag competition that was also developed by Grimm. So what this round of funding provided us is a high school level and college level CTF um, where students are actually, you know, <laughs> interacting with all of our technologies to, to uh, unlock different challenges here um, and kind of stay tuned for nets in the works. So thank you for turning into our talk. Thank you to all the volunteers at the ICS Village. And if you're interested in knowing more or getting involved, we're always looking for industry support, mentors, feedback, speakers. You know, you kind of name it. I, I love having that loop of industry built into our classes and make sure that what I'm teaching isn't out of date, obsolete, or out of step with industry best practices are. Um, thank you very much and have a great DEF CON.